Rabbi Sid. Thank you once again for the prayers of tonight. Thank you because you have broken the hand of premature death upon every one of members of Maranatha Church. We thank you because we are going to live and not die. Thank you for your data you have used much more than she can imagine. Continually use her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. You may please be seated. Please let me greet your neighbor. Tell them you are welcome. Good to see you. Amen. How has been your day? The Lord will strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. I repeat, the Lord will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. The fasting is how many days today? 42. How many days more? Eight. The Lord that has seen us to 42 will see us to 50 in the name of Jesus. When Staff Me was saying that God will do another 50, thank God, but that will be your face. But that will be you in trouble. Hey, I said, thank God, though, but that will be, it's not pastor. God will help us. But if God says so, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. We want to appreciate every one of us that has been joining us in daily prayer for Nigeria. Our prayer will be answered. It shall be well with Nigeria. The election will be smooth. It will be fair. There will not be violence. There will not be trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We finished the series last week. And we are going to take, it's, going to, it's not going to be a long series, but the series is one that will take you to do a lot of study. It's one that's going to take you to do a lot of study on yourself, by yourself. And so I'm going to do the introduction to us because what we'll be looking at, what we are going to look at, we are going to look at a book of the Bible. And so I'm going to do a form of introduction, the essence why we must look at that book, the reason why we must study it. And my prayer tonight is that from today, our life will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to be looking at a particular book in the Bible, the book of Proverbs. And we're going to look at it as a guide to wisdom for us as Christians. The book of the book of Proverbs as a guide to wisdom to us as Christians. When, when Safi was taking the prayer point, she said something that my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. And so, for us as Christians, wisdom is a very, very important virtue. You know, I said virtue that we must have. Unfortunately, many of us neglect, refuse, according to law, to follow and to look at the importance of wisdom to us as Christians. My prayer is that the Lord is going to open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Some months ago, I gave the workers an assignment. And we did it for like, I can't remember, two or three weeks. And it's from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3 and verse 33. 2 Samuel, chapter 3 and verse 33. Can we read one, two, go? Diet Abner as a full diet. I need someone to help me interpret this scripture. I need someone to help me interpret what 
is the purport of the statement of the king concerning Abner. I hope the mic is ready. God bless you. The second one, yes. I need somebody to help me interpret it. I don't want a worker. Somebody to help me interpret it. Why is everybody looking at me? Okay, thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. Then Abner was a great warrior. Yes, sir. Uh, walking... You know the story? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, but to cut the whole this story This statement, short, what is the king trying to say? Okay, okay. Here, Abner died. Um, there is a place still that is written around this second somewhere that his, ha his hands were not tight. Yet, he died as if he was not a warrior. Okay, good. So, what is the meaning of this scripture? Okay. The meaning of this scripture is that Abner ought not to die like that. Like that. Okay. So, why did he die like that? He died because he refused to apply wisdom to which he has to. He refused to apply wisdom. God bless you. Somebody else. We are getting there. Very good. I need somebody else to help us talk about this scripture. Oh, yeah, brother Femi. Who? Ah, you are a bishop. Oh. I don't want bishop. Ever be new. I want a man mother like us. Oh, yeah. I need somebody to, please now. Ah, my time is short. Oh, so I want to, I do want to, if you take my time, I'll take your time. So let me not take your time. So you quickly answer. I need somebody. Oh, yeah. Sister Sarah, give to anybody. You give to Bishop again. Don't give to Bishop. Don't, I don't want Bishop. I want. Uh, good. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Just tell us. It's English. Second Samuel chapter 3, verse 33. Come, don't remove it now. We have not finished. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Obviously, the Abner is not, is not supposed to die. It's not supposed to die. Do we agree that Abner is not supposed to die? Do we agree that Abner is not supposed to die? Okay. But basically, he did not apply what he knows or he did not defend himself. And so, if he did not apply, hold on, start your okay, hold on. He did not apply what he knows. He did not apply, don't put the second one. He did not apply what he knows. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I like the two things. Any other person? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. God bless you, ma. The last person. I want to say from the, from the, the king lamented. He's lamenting. Over his death. He was regretting. Because even in your career, you can be beaten in that career. Okay. He died like a fool. He no, died he like a fool. Okay, like good. Wait, ma. He died like a fool. Yes. What does that statement mean? He did not apply what he knows in that situation well to have saved him. Was he a fool? He was a fool. According to this scripture, was he a fool? Yes. Ah, I do not agree with you. No, he was not a fool, but he died as a fool. But died like a fool. God yes. bless you, ma. Praise the Lord. Because I'm a student of literature, there's something we call simile. So when you are comparing, when you use like and as, that's you are comparing. King is telling us here that Abner died as a fool would die. So that tells us that Abner was not supposed to be a fool, but he died like a fool. And so, that is going to be the premise of our discussion tonight. Many of us as Christians, we have the knowledge, we have the understanding, well, maybe we have the understanding, but oftentimes we choose, refuse not to walk in wisdom. And it's a big problem for us as Christians. Abner was a warrior. If you read the story, please, I want to read the story when you get home. I mean, the workers, we took time to look at it. Read the story very well. It was at the edge of the city of refuge. Once he entered that place, he cannot be killed. 
And he was there, they called him, and he knew, and he knew the implication. But did not apply what he knew. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. That's going to be our anchor scripture as we run this morning, I mean this evening. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. Wisdom is the principal word, pretty pattern. Therefore, get what? Get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get what? Get understanding. Beloved, as a Christian, our work as a Christian must be work in such a way that we work it with wisdom. We must work our work as a Christian with what in life? With wisdom. As we go through life as Christian, our work must be, work now is W-A-L-K, must be with wisdom. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 15 to 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, Abimbola, who is there tonight? See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fool, but what? As wise. Redeeming the time, because what? The days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. Understanding what the will of God is. I didn't say 1817. Beloved, for every one of us, the time is short. The time is short. And the days are evil. Are the days not evil? The days are evil. And so as children of God, it is important for us because days are evil to make the best use of our time. To make the best use of our opportunity. To make the best use of our Christian race. The time are short and the days are evil. And the truth is that the Bible has made us realize that our enemy is what? Is cunning. Our enemy is what? Is corny. Is streetwise. And so when you are dealing with a corny person, what must you do? You must be what? You must be wise. Unfortunately, many of us as Christians, we are not wise. And so that's why it's important for us to look at this book of Proverbs, which is a guide to wisdom. And by that, We'll be able to live our life as Christians in such a way that we will enjoy life. Many today are wasting their time and they are wasting their life. Why? Because their lives are, they are failing to exercise wisdom in their daily living. They are wasting their time. Look at Abna in 2nd Samuel chapter 3 and verse 33. What can you say that Abna did? Wasted his life. May you, you not waste your life in Jesus' name. Abna just wasted his life. And there are several people that are wasting their life because they are not applying the wisdom of God in the, day they li- in the way they live on a daily basis. And so if you look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. We know that the word of God is meant to do what? It's meant in verse 17. It's meant to equip us for the good work. 
the word of God is supposed to do what? The Bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto what? All good works. And so the word of God is meant to prepare us. It's meant of, it's the word of God is supposed to equip us as men and women of God unto every good work. And so it is natural for us to know that this word provides us with sound ways of living. Give us advice on the way our life should be conducted on a daily basis. And if you look at the book of Proverbs, beloved, I think I mentioned here some time ago that most times every month, one chapter, you know it's 31, one chapter every day. One chapter every day. One chapter every day for 31 days. Whether you like it or not, you discover that you are soaking in the wisdom of God contained in the book of Proverbs. And so why are we looking at this book what is the aim we want to achieve? We want to introduce this book to us as a source of wisdom as children of God. And for us to utilize what is contained in that book so that we can, we can be able to work wisely in our exercise of working, we'll be able to use that book to work wisely. Beloved, I think it was in Romans chapter 10 and verse 2. Please, can I have it? That long ago, I stopped on this scripture. That so many people have zeal. I say Romans chapter 10 and verse 2, not 2 Timothy. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not what? Some versions say we are not according to knowledge. It is good to have zeal. But if the zeal is not coupled with what? Ah. Uh, my prayer is that the Lord will open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Even our zeal will couple it, will add to it knowledge and wisdom in the name of Jesus. And so the book of Proverbs, what is the purpose of the book of Proverbs? What is the purpose? If you look at the first chapter of that book, if your Bible is like man, even say prologue, purpose and theme. And so what is the purpose of the book of Proverbs? Number one, pop, number one is that if you look at verse 2, one of the main purpose of the book of Proverbs is to know wisdom and instruction and to perceive the word of understanding. To know wisdom and instruction and to perceive the word of understanding. And so what is the scripture saying here? The purpose of the book of Proverbs is to teach us how to live. To teach us how to live. To teach us how to act in every circumstances. In this book of Proverbs, there are several Things that you can study. Family relationship is there. Business dealing is there. You can look at terms that talks about even etiquette in social relationship. Talk about self-control. It is there. Qualities like humility, patience, respect, how to deal with the with, with, with poor. Friendship, 
they are there. And so this book is to help us to live well as a cry as a Christian and how to act in every circumstances. Look at verse 4. No, verse 3. And he said, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To receive instruction, wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. The book will also t tell us, teach us how to be just, how to be fair in all that we do. It will teach us how to be just, how to be fair in all that we do. And so you will know whether you are, whether you are just. A just person will not, when it comes to, it will not take side with another. It, to be fair, when dealing with others, you try, you make sure that you are not overly condemning. You give benefit of doubt. Praise the Lord. And so the book of wisdom, with the book of Proverbs, will help us to be able to be just, to live justly, and to live fairly. Verse 4, very important. It said to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Who is a simple person? Who is a simple person? Hello? Yes, who is a simple person? That takes things gently, okay, easily, simple, okay? Literal meaning of simple. Who is a simple person? Addition? Yes, ma. Who is a simple person? Hallelujah. A, no, a naive person. Simple person is a naive person. Praise the Lord. And so, what the book of Proverbs would do for a simple person is to give that person prudence. And what is prudence? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 5. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 5. O oh, ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fool, be ye of an understanding heart. It will make the simple also to be wise. Prudence is, the other of prudence is practical wisdom. A prudent man is one that has practical wisdom. And so, it will give the, the naive, it will give them wisdom. It will give them prudence. What does it say? It will give a young man. To the young man, what? Knowledge and what? And discretion. And so, what does a young man need? A young man is a young man because he's not yet old. Abby? That's the simple definition of a young man. And so Proverbs will tell a young man, right, about what that young man will face in the future. It will teach that young man what a young man will face what in the future. Proverbs prepares the young man for the days ahead. In wisdom, it prepares you for what? For the days ahead. And that's why some people, right, they may be 20 years old. I've been simple like that. But God has graced them with wisdom of 50 years old. So, I've been simple like that before. Ah. And so, wisdom will prepare the young man. Warn him, tell him about the problems that he is going to face in life and in future. 
And so in verse 5, he said, A wise man will err and will increase in what? In learning. And the man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And so what is the purpose of the proof of program for a wise man also? A wise man that stop learning. What happened to him? Is what? He start dying. When a wise man stop being wise, what happened to him? What happened to him? What happened to a wise man that stop being wise? He become foolish. That's what happens to Abner. And so, what it will do for a wise man is what? Is to make him wiser. Increase him in learning. He will be wiser in life. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 9. Give instruction to who? A wise man. I will be what? He will be yet wiser. Teach a just man. I will what? It will increase in learning. And so, the book of Proverbs, wisdom, is for the one that is not wise. Abi, he will become wise. The young man that does not know anything, that is going to face the problem ahead of him, he will instruct him on those ones. Even if the one that is wise, what will happen to him? It will make him wiser. And so, whichever category you belong to, it is a, it's a very good book for you. It's a very book. It's a very good thing for you to have wisdom. And he said, "A man of understanding will have wise counsel." And so, wise counsel talks about wise advice, wise advice, wise guidance. My prayer this morning is that I mean this evening is that even as we follow this pattern of wisdom, the Lord will make us wise in the name of Jesus. And so the book of Proverbs is essentially designed to make people wise. To make people wise. If you want to be wise, go and look at the book of Proverbs. Study it. It also helps us to learn how to, white, to, to act wisely. And righteously. It helps us to act wisely and righteously. You will not only be wise, you'll be able to act wisely and righteously. And then you'll be able to treat others with fairness. Praise the Lord. And so if you look at Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7, Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. I'm sure many of us know this scripture. It said, the fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning of knowledge. But fool despises wisdom and instruction. And so the starting point of wisdom is what? Is the fear of the Lord. Is what? The fear of the Lord. How does a man become wise? The first step for that man is to trust God and reverence the Lord. And that's exactly what the fear of the Lord is. Trusting God and reverencing him. Trusting God and reverence. That is the beginning. And so if you, if, you, if you have no fear of the Lord, if you don't trust God, if you don't reverence him, forget about wisdom. Praise the Lord. You must trust him you must reverence him. That is the beginning of wisdom. And so I'm going to ask, how can a man fear God? How can a man fear God? Quick, quick, quick. How do you know a man that fear God? I think, let me rephrase it that way. How do you know a man that fear God? the first thing that's not making people to answer the question today. Okay, God bless you. Let me give it to Sister Funke. How do you know a man that fear God? Praise God. Hallelujah. A man that fears God will do his will. 
we do the will of God. We'll be obedient to his we'll obedient instruction. To God, yes. We will run away from sin. We will run away from sin. God bless you, man. A man that fears God will do what? Do the will of God. Will be obedient to God. That person will run away from sin. Any other thing that we know that the man fears God? Hello? Are we are so quiet. Any other thing that will show that a man fears God? That person must also surrender his life. He, the man will live in submission to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And so, I'm going to ask a question. What exactly is wisdom? And why is it valuable? What exactly is wisdom? And so, Gio give us one classical definition. Can anybody remind me? The, the definition that Gio gave us. So that's going to be the starting point of wisdom. And um, I've opened the door for bishop to bishop, elders, to everybody. Okay. My brother at the back there. Thank you, sir. He gave us a definition of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wisdom is simply application of knowledge. Wisdom is what, sir? Application of knowledge. Application of, of knowledge. Knowledge. But he has expanded it now. He has added to that definition. He has added one word to it. Does anybody know it? Yes, sir. Give it to. Yes, sir. I think the word that they added was um, correct. Correct application of what? Of knowledge. So he added the word correct application of what? Of knowledge. I, I know some time ago we did a study on um, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I remember we said that somebody may know, may have, may have knowledge, right? But do not have understanding, Abby, and then do not have wisdom. Somebody that has understanding surely may have knowledge, but may not have wisdom. I will remember. But we said anybody that has wisdom surely has knowledge, has understanding, and they will have wisdom. Do you get your home to go over it again? Somebody may have knowledge and don't have understanding, and then do not have knowledge. Somebody may have understanding. Once he has understanding, it's possible to have he has knowledge, but may not have wisdom. But once somebody has wisdom, he has understanding and he has knowledge. Praise the Lord. And so 20th century encyclopedia of religious knowledge defines wisdom as a realistic approach to the problem of life. A realistic approach to the problem of life. Another man of God, Omar Ole, Ele, define wisdom. Wisdom is insight into the underlying causes and significance or consequence of things, which insight enables one to apply to the best end the knowledge which he has. The word inside. You know, inside, when you say somebody has inside, that person has capacity to understand that thing accurately. Accurately. He has guys to understand accurately somebody or something. He has capacity to ac accurate understanding of someone or something is what you call insight. And so if somebody you give an example of wisdom, something may happen to two people, but depending on their 
wisdom, their reaction will be different. I think it was here, somebody was asking me a question that, I think it was here, I was in my house, that said, why is it that if Okada man, or those damn fool, when they drive rough, why I do not usually abuse them or fight them? And I said, wisdom taught me that I should respect myself. I think, yeah, I said, I respect myself because I know that if I should fight an Okada man, what will happen? Eh? What will happen now? If I should come down and fight a downfall driver or a Okada man, what do you think will happen? Ma? Can I really fight them? Ah, I'm not a pastor. Ah, they will be black and blue. And so any one of you may be passing by. Even the person that is passing by may not be able to help me. And the person will dodge. Ah, Pastor, I don't know you. And so the wisdom tells me that there are not people I should engage. Praise the Lord. And so wisdom will tell me that. And so I, I know, I have an understanding that, man, these people are not people I should engage. And so I don't engage them. You abuse my father, abuse my mother, I might even tell you thank you. When we are coming this evening, one of them parked at the one down for from Bariga Park at the junction of Mahata, we want to enter. And so my driver was just somehow the bonnet hit the vehicle. And I look at the eyes of the guy. My driver was abusing me. Abusing me. I was telling my heart. To better. Mama Lonte Mini. You know, the guy was even abusing me. Despite the fact he was the one that was wrong, he was abusing my driver. I just removed my face. And so wisdom will tell you how to react in every circumstances. It will make you to react in the proper way. When some word come, wisdom, will, God will give you the wisdom to react, I mean, to, to reply with the right word. My prayer is that even from this moment, God will give us wisdom in the name of Jesus. The value of wisdom is so enormous. So if you look at the first chapter 1 up to chapter 9, you can see the value of wisdom. Give me proof. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We are going to verse 18. Happy is the man that find what? Wisdom. And the man that get it what? Understanding. Verse 14. For the merchandise of wisdom is better than the merchandise of silver. And the gain of wisdom than fine gold. So if you are looking for silver, you are looking for gold, it's good. But look for wisdom. Wisdom is more precious than what? Than rubies. And all the things that you can desire are not to be compared unto wisdom. Verse 16. Length of days is in our right hand and in our left hand riches and honor. Okay. Verse 17. Our ways are ways of pleasantness. And all are part are what? Are peace. Verse 18. Wisdom is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that would do what? Retain her. And so, you can see the prosperous life that wisdom can produce. Gold, silver, precious thing in the hand of a fool. That thing is what will kill that fool. I hope you, have you seen anybody that that they are riches, what they have killed them. 
because they are not wise. You are looking for gold, first of all, get wisdom. Silver, get it. When you get wisdom, it's a riches and honor. They will do what? They have you. Pleasantness, peace. May the God open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverb, in that, let's go to verse 21 and 26 also. Verse 21 and verse 26. You know, in verse 13 and 18, it tells us of the prosperous life that wisdom can produce. And so I go to verse 21 to verse 26. I read, My son, let not wisdom depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. What is discretion? We'll come to that. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to wear to your neck. Verse 23. Then shall you walk in thy way out safely and thy foot shall not what? Shall not stumble. Verse 24. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Verse 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it come. And verse 26, the last verse. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Beloved, wisdom you keep you and I from the pitfall that are out there to make us to stumble. Wisdom will keep us from those pitfalls that are out there to get us down as children of God. Remember, the ministry of the devil, John chapter 10 and verse 10, Abby, is to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy and we are told that the enemy is like a roaring lion. What does he do? He goes about looking for you and I to devour. And so the, the scripture is telling us that that wisdom will keep you and I from the free fall that could easily take us. And so The book of Proverbs will show you some of those pitfalls. There is constant warning in that scripture about those pitfalls. And the wise, once you eat them, you are safe. Let's look about two or three of them. Number one, evil companionship. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10 to 19. Evil companionship. My son, if what? Sinner do what? entice you. Consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay with, wait for blood. Let us lock privily for the innocent without cause. Don't answer them. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as they, they go down to the pit. Don't listen to them. And so, this one will tell you, will keep you from evil companionship. Genesis chapter 39 and verse 7. That's what saved Joseph. That is what saved Joseph. The woman asked him, Come. Come and lie with me. But Joseph knew that, Ah, uh ah. -uh, I cannot be joined with evil companion. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 29. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 29. A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him where? In the way that is not good. What evil companion, evil people want to do 
is for you to join them in their wrongdoing. If you do that, you will be caught up with them and in self-destruction. If you join them, but wisdom will preserve you from this. Is there anybody that somebody has asked to join in evil and with wisdom you know joy and you are saved? I need someone to share the experience with us. I need somebody. Anybody? Somebody invites you to come and to do some evil. And God gave you wisdom not to join. And eventually you saw the, the, the result on them. Ah, nobody. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I remember when I was in school long ago, you know, I have a friend, my, my very best friend, you know, so it was like, you know, luring me kind of, oh, let's go and meet some friends, let's go and meet people, let's go and meet some people. So it was God that had not saved me. It's not just wisdom per se, the grace of God. There was a day he wanted to even take me to go and initiate in a court. The guy belonged to a court. I did not even know it. So looking back, after many things have happened, I knew that if I had joined that court, if God had not rescued me, I would have been wasted by now. I wouldn't have even survived it. Because God, God bless you, happened. sir. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sir. And that's why in Psalm 1 and verse 1, the Bible tells us that we should not stand in, in the path of the sinners. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't stand in the ways of the sinner. Don't sit in the seat of the Kung Fu. You can't join with them. They want, to, want you to join them so that what will happen will happen and then you will be saved. But thank God, some of us have God taught us early. I, 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 my was even dramatic. You know, all of them used to go. They would jump the fence, go and buy bread. They would jump, go and pray. The first day I joined them, I was the one that was caught. And so when they caught me, normally if they catch any one of them, they would not name names. Was that they caused me since I was not I was not used to it. My mouth named all the names. And so they got all of them and they flogged them. So the next time they'll be telling themselves, don't let they follow us. Don't let him follow us. And so by the grace of God, at least God Himself saved me that they did not even want me to follow them because they know that if I follow them, I'll bring them bad luck. The Lord will save us from evil companionship. Proverbs chapter 5, 1 to 14 also talks about a moral woman. By the grace of God, he said, My son, attend unto thy wisdom and bow thy hands unto my understanding. Verse 2, that thou may regard discretion that thy lips may keep knowledge. Verse 3, for the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is another, is smoother than oil. Verse 4, but her end is bitter in warm wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. I'll stop there. You can read it when you get home. And the moral affair might appear exciting and harmless. But immorality is one of the ways to destroy oneself. This may appear two seconds, 30 or five minutes. It would destroy one physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And so the exercise of wisdom will spare one from that total ruin. I beg you as children of God, one of the sins that God does not like is sexual immorality. One of these days we'll be talking about it. God has been putting in my mind for us to talk about it. And I think I also have an experience to share on this. I don't think whether I've shared it here or with the church. When I was in the university, where we lived is a community. And so out of 10, maybe one person will go to school. So those of us that were going to school were like superstars. I hope you know, in that community, when you are superstars, and so we are superstars. And so, uh, all for some of our boys that are smart, that's an opportunity for them to lay and lay and do all kind of, you know what I'm talking about. And so one day, one of the guys in our community came to me and was beginning to call me, oh, okay, they're my husband. 
First of all, look at it. Husband care. Who marry who for who? And she was very pleasant, trying to love me. I was angry. I was very upset. What kind of rubbish is this? And so, of course, I wasn't born again, but I don't know how God just helped me. I just kicked, I will just go away. And so she was coming persistently, and I stopped talking to her. When she comes like this, I take this way. Lo and behold, few months down the line, I just said, I told me, just came out. And in, in that time, I, was, I just imagine, I just imagine that if I have tried once, what will have happened? And I discovered that she actually want to push the pregnancy on me. And you know that time, there is no DNA. Happy aware. No DNA. And for the fact that you are going to school, all the community will, will come and give the girl to you. And you know, unfortunately, the, the unfortunate part of it, she gave birth to a twins. So they will tell you that there is twins gene in your body. There is no way you could have escaped that is one incident till I go out of this world. I will never forget. And I keep thanking God every day. In those days, they don't argue about who get pregnant now. Once the girl say you are the one, you are the one. The girl verdict is, is, is there. I said, oh, I will have lost my beautiful wife. God forbid. <laughs> Praise the Lord. End of. Hey, can they not even end? You know those ones, they will sponsor you to school. At least they will there to put their children. The man is going to, they know the lawyer is sure for you in the future. All the community will gather money for you and send you to school. Praise the Lord. But wisdom will let you know that. Mm -mm. And so we will spare you from total ruin. May the Lord help us. You people are laughing. It's not for you. It's not funny. I'll just be watching. I'll be looking at the girl. Ah, ah. I pray for Baba Abebire. I pray for every one of us here. The Lord will save us from every plan of the enemy for our life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so, I'm going to stop here tonight. If there are questions, I'm going to finish up next week because of our time. Any question, wisdom. Hmm. So next week, I'm going to bring out some of the. Sorry? Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, my question is this. Yes, sir. Uh, you said that uh, wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. Gio said that. According that to Daddy Gio. The, the definition. Yes, correct application of correct. knowledge. What of in a scenario after you've applied? wisdom on yes, a particular sir. situation. Yes, sir. And you still run out of ideas. You don't have what? You don't have any ideas. You any, don't have any ideas? Yes, uh -uh. on what to do on that situation. What you have any applied idea. is your idea now. I will not have an idea again. Once you, you have know, applied the correct... You know definitely that you have applied the right, correct wisdom. Give me a very good scenario. Okay, for instance now, uh, let's say you are working in a bank. Yes, sir. And... Okay, sorry. You're working in a bank. Yes, sir. And maybe opportunity presents to you to buy maybe shares at that particular time. To buy shares? Yes. Okay. And you put your money into it and you bought these shares. And you believe in that you have applied the right wisdom. You believe? Investing that money okay. at that time. That's okay. the only thing you can think of at that time. That's the only thing. To use that money for. So... And you believe that, okay, in years to come, I will reap the profit yes, of sir. this investment I'm making. Yes, and sir. after making the investment, and at the end, you run at a loss. Yes, sir. You did not realize your profit from yes, the sir. investment. Yes, sir. How, how can you apply wisdom to, you know, to balance yourself in that kind of situation? Your, your question has carried to Lego. <laughs> First and foremost, if you if you believe, if you say that that's the only thing 
that you can think of uh, for the fact that you believe that that is the only thing you can think does not make it wisdom for the fact that you think does not make it wisdom and that's why what we are talking about here and that's why we are referring to the book of uh, referring to the book of proverb we are talking about godly wisdom godly wisdom that certain principle of wisdom once you by god help you to apply the wisdom you will get the right result and so for shares for shares you are your knowledge of shares does not determine whether you are even the best of share go and look at stock brokers now even those that are stock guys they lost a lot of money that's not what we are talking about godly wisdom for instance if you have said that oh even before you take that decision you are praying to god god give me wisdom what to do if you pray think if you pray that god give me wisdom to do i've also i think i said here some time ago that there was a time a friend of my banker came that i should come and take share i should come and buy shares and so he said wanted to give me loan that i should take the loan and buy share I don't know. I just look share. Share, share. And share was boomy. Everybody was buying shares. It was time. Somehow, somehow. I don't I don't know. God God just helped me. I said, Whoa. I don't think I want to buy shares. I don't know about shares. I don't know. I don't. Anyway, I think I knew a bit about shares because I was doing commercial transactions, but not that I know how they invest it. And so I just felt, well, I don't want to buy. And I remember I got to my house and said, ah, why don't you tell him that you are building a house, you want to roof? Let him borrow the money to roof the house instead of buying shares. And I called the man, oh, God, eh, I know that, but I, want, I have a house, I want to roof. Can you give me the money? Can I take the loan to do the roof rather than doing the shares? And to the glory of God, I collected money, roofed the house. It was the period, share, crash. And so I will have lost my money. And so, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And so when it is God's wisdom, even before you speak, you will ask, ask God to tell you what to say, what to do. And God will do what? God will guide you. Amen. Usher has passed the basket as you run. Is anybody raising hand? Okay. Pass the basket as you are Rounding up. Oshas, please. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. Hallelujah. Question, sir. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, sir. I, my question is from that proverb, chapter 1, verse 7. Yes, sir. Verse 7, yeah. Yes, sir. And the question is, uh, if a new, let's say, newly converts um, gives his or her life to Jesus, Yes, sir. Is he, is he the fear of the Lord that he or she needs first or knowledge? And... Um, if it is not, if it is the fear of the Lord, how can the persons receive the fear of the Lord? So, which did the person need first? Hold on. Between what? Knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord. So, what is knowledge? So, it's as if you taught us the fear of the Lord is different from knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. The first thing you need is the fear of the Lord. And I said the fear of the Lord entails trust of God and reverence for him. It's the beginning. It's the first thing that I must call. Where you start your wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the first and foremost is trust and reverence for the Lord. If you don't fear God, you will not apply God wisdom. Like moral, immorality we talked about. If you don't trust God, you don't revere God, you don't consider anything, just go to it and do it. That's where between a child of God that fears God and one evil companion. If you, are not, if you don't fear God, you follow everybody. If you don't reverence God, you go anywhere. But as a child of God, not even, as a, not even talking as a pastor, I know there are some places I must not go. 
And so if I don't go to that places, I don't get into those such problem. And that's why I brought out Proverbs chapter 1 and verse, I mean, Psalm 1 and verse 1. And so it's the beginning. That's the starting point. You must fear God. A man that fears God will treat his wife well. The wife that trusts fear God will treat the husband well. Friends that, try, that fear God will treat the other, the other friend well. A, 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 fear, a friend that fear God will be fair to his other friend, will be just to his other friends, will consider them, and that's it. Praise the Lord. You want to ask a question? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to add to it that even wisdom gives us long life. Ah, yeah, somebody shared something. We went for a naming sometime, some years back. And the man said, like, you gave example, for example, if a Kada man is, you know, driving rough or maybe down for driver, mm. God has given you wisdom just to, just to be going. You don't need to answer the Okada man. Yes, so the pastor said he was sharing, he was giving a word. So he now go to it and said that, there's a Kada man on this place, Lagos, you know, this, this uh, cantonment. In before you get to VI, before you, yeah, Bonny, yes, that place. Bonny camp. So, the, your Bonny camp, the man said the Okada man was coming and mistakenly hit the man's car. And the next thing, the man just came out from the car and gave the Okada man slap, bam. And the next thing, the Okada man so just came down from the bike and carried the bike man and throw the bike man inside the water. And the Okada man to so jump into it. And by the time they brought the two of them out, they've already dead. So I want to say, wisdom too can give us life. It is not all the things that anybody does that will answer. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, ma. Shall we rise on our feet tonight? Be unto me according to your word. According to your promises, I can stand secure. I do upon my heart. Jesus set me free. According to your word, O oh Lord, be unto me. Shall we talk to God tonight? Let's ask that the Almighty God who equip us with the wisdom from him. Wisdom from on eye. The Bible said the wisdom from God is first. Wisdom from God is first. Peaceable. Let's ask God for the wisdom of God from on eye tonight. In all our dealings, in all our ways, the grace to be able to walk in wisdom, the grace to be able to live in wisdom, the grace to be able to act in wisdom so that our life shall be prosperous, so that we shall be delivered from the pitfalls that are waiting to trip us. Let's ask God tonight what we have learned will not be easily forgotten that shall produce results in our heart even to walk circumspectly and not as unwise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Lord. Father, I want to thank you for our offering tonight. Please accept it. Bless it. Return to us in several foods. By reason of this offering, my Lord and my Savior, let our hand never be empty in the name of Jesus. As your children go to Nevada, please go with them. Prosper our ways. The remaining days of this week, let it be glorious. Once again, we pray for the election coming this Saturday. Father, let it be peaceful. Let it be smooth. Let there be no rancor. Let there be no violence. Let there be no trouble in the name of Jesus. Let your own will be done concerning this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Lord. Glory be to your holy name, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please don't forget, tomorrow our physical prayer meeting continues. 6 to 7 p.m. we'll be meeting for the continuation of our prayer. The Lord will answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. On Sunday, we are going to be having our worship service, the first service. And the last three days, 27, 28, and the first, we'll be having our three days power praise. The Lord will crown the fasting with glory for us in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace in fellowship. 
in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful night.